Family Theater presents Lucille Ball and John Howard. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Something in the Air, starring John Howard. And now, here is your hostess, Lucille Ball. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Something in the Air, starring John Howard as James Tracy. Weather Bureau. Yes, you can expect rain beginning at 7.50 this evening and clearing at 11.05 tomorrow morning. Oh, no, madam. If you hang your wash out tomorrow morning, it'll be rained on. Well, I'm sorry, madam. We don't make the weather. Oh. Weather Bureau. Sorry, no rain for the Salinas Valley till Wednesday. No, not this Wednesday. Next Wednesday. It'll begin at 6.45 in the morning. Weather Bureau Weinman. Who? The Los Angeles Sun Telegram? You want an interview with the forecaster? Well, there'll be a press conference at 2.30 this afternoon here at the Bureau office. Excuse me, please. Uh, hold the line a moment, please. Uh, yes? Perhaps you can direct me to Mr. Tracy. The chief? I'm Dr. Torkerson. He's expecting me. Oh, yes, Doc. Let's see. He was right here. There he is. Oh, chief! Chief! Yes? The doctor's here. Oh, yes. How do you do, doctor? How uh, do you do? Uh, the L.A. Sun Telegram is on the line, chief. Can't talk to him now. Well, you kind of hold things down while the doctor and I have our little chat, all right? Sure thing. Oh, incidentally, Chief, the American Society of Umbrella Manufacturers has been waiting on line two for about an hour now. Uh, they say something about a testimonial for you. Can't talk to them now. Tell them thanks, but no thanks, huh? Sure. Uh, how about Desert Rock? They're waiting on line four. Oh, I'd better talk to them. Excuse me, doctor. <laughs> when you said your office was snowed under, I thought you were exaggerating. <laughs> I wish I were. Oh, hello, Desert Rock. Yes, this is the chief meteorologist. You'd like to set one off when? No, I wouldn't do it then. Now, your best time would be the 24th at about 6 in the morning. No, on the 22nd, you're going to have high winds starting at 4.35 p.m. Make visibility very poor. No, the winds won't stop until late afternoon of the 23rd. 6 a.m. on the 24th will be clear and calm. That's the best time for that sort of thing. You're welcome. No trouble at all. Oh, Jerry, hmm? if the American League calls, tell them I worked out a schedule that'll ensure them against getting rained out. I put it in the mail last night. Right. Now, uh, let's go into my office, Doctor. All right. Sit down, Doctor. Thank you. You certainly have a busy office. Well, that's part of what's worrying me. Sorry I couldn't get over to your office. There's just so much to do. It's perfectly all right. <laughs> Frankly, I think I would come out of curiosity anyway. You've been making quite a stir with your fantastic weather predictions, you know. I know. Maybe I'm foolish to worry about it. Perhaps not. Uh, suppose you, you tell me the story and we'll see, eh? Well, I hardly know where to begin. Well, let's take it right from the beginning, from the first deviation from the normal routine from the first uh, unnatural occurrence, eh? The first deviation. Well, I think that was about a month ago. Just a little after I came into the building one morning. I noticed there was an odd-looking little man running the elevator instead of the regular boy. Going up? Yes. Uh, 23rd floor, please. 23rd. Where's George this morning? George? Oh, the regular operator. Oh, George! Well, he, um, he's ill. Oh. I'm just filling in for him. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> You're James Tracy, the weatherman, aren't you? Well, yes, I'm James Tracy. Got a little cold, haven't you? No. No, I feel fine. Oh. Be good bobsledding weather soon. You like bobsledding? Bobsledding? Skiing, maybe. You ski. Oh, it's a great sport. Especially ski jumping. No, I don't ski. 
And I don't ice skate either. Now, why all the questions? Oh, uh, no reason. Uh, I was just curious. <laughs> this is your floor. Well, thanks for the ride. Don't mention it. Oh, Mr. Tracy. Yes? Toboggan? No. No toboggan. Well, there's an odd one. What a bunch of questions. Morning, Jerry. Ah, oh, good morning, Chief. Jerry, who was running the elevator when you came up? Night watchman. I came up early. Why? Uh, nothing important. Well, anything new or interesting? How's Marcia? Well, we're not getting too many reports, but it looks like she pooped out. Got no reinforcement or is stacked up on some island or something. Ah, oh, too bad. She had the makings of a fine little storm. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't make weather like they used to. Well, at least we were right on the prediction, huh, Trace? Mm, good enough. Well, we better line up the data and start on today's map. Oh, oh, Trace, before you get started, there's a lady here to see you. A lady? Yeah, says she edits the woman's section for the paper, wants to do a feature about us for the ladies. Oh, some days it doesn't pay to get up. Where is the lady? Well, she came in while I was putting our report on the wire, so I put her in your office. Well, I'll talk to the old girl, Jerry. Let's get it over with. I've got a lot of work to do. Well, she's not exactly an old girl, Trace. You'll see what I mean. Miss Dilson? Oh, are you ready for me now? I do hope I'm not being too much trouble. Oh, none at all. It's a pleasure to have you. That's what we're in business for. Uh, Miss Dilson, may I present Mr. James Tracy, our chief meteorologist? How do you do, Mr. Tracy? A uh, pleasure, Miss Dilson. Uh, Trace, uh, since you have so much to do, I, uh, I could explain our organizations and procedures. No, no, Jerry. Wouldn't hear of it. It's, uh, your day on the map anyway, isn't it? <laughs> okay, you're the boss. Excuse me. Of course. Now, where would you like to begin, Miss Dilson? Ask anything you want. Well, Mr. Tracy, I'm afraid I don't even know enough to know how to ask an intelligent question. <laughs> well, then let's start with what weather forecasting is. All right. It's really nothing more than the practical application of meteorology. Well, that's fine if you know what meteorology is. Oh, it's simply that branch of physics which treats of the atmosphere and its phenomena. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wind, rain, hurricanes, lightning, and so forth. Through meteorology, we determine the weather, sometimes months in advance, plotting the winds, keeping track of pressure areas around the globe. You certainly have to know your work to do something like that. Oh, it's not so much. Why, it's so big, it's frightening. You must have studied a long time, Mr. Tracy. Well, it took a little while. This is really fascinating. Oh, what's this big map? Oh, that's today's weather map. Oh, actually, it's for the week. Mm -hmm. You see, we, we mark the changes as the data comes in. The data? Well... Weather outposts all over the world send us reports, even ships at sea. If they have a change in wind direction or barometric pressure, uh, they report it, and we use the information in compiling forecasts. Oh. oh, here. Look here. This little storm was reported three days ago by a Grace Line ship. That little egg shape? That's a storm? A moving, low-pressure area. Oh, it's a storm, all right. Well, it's so small. Yeah, it's a little disappointing. I had such hopes for Marcia. You name your storms after girls? <laughs> yes. Got the idea from a book by a fellow named Stuart. Uh, Storm. Maybe you've read it? Uh, no. Well, you missed a good one. But I'm afraid our storm isn't going to amount to much, though. Mr. Tracy, this is the most fascinating business I ever heard of. Why, I'll bet you could give a forecast right now, couldn't you? Certainly. You see, right here we have the Pacific Coast. Mm -hmm. And this area in the circle is the Pacific High. There's a slight drop in pressure here, but in view of the circumstances, it doesn't mean much. Oh. So, I'd say the weather tomorrow will be generally fair, with just a little morning fog along the coast. Winds from, uh, oh, say, 5 to 10 miles an hour. Oh, it's amazing, Mr. Tracy. Your family must be very proud of you. Oh, I have no family, Miss Stilson. I'm what you might call footloose and fiancé free. <laughs> Now, would you like to see how we put our information together? Mm -hmm. Now, come along, I'll show you. Very, very interesting, Mr. Tracy. Uh, tell me, does this seem to have uh, some bearing on what happened? Well, I'm coming to that. I'll just have to tell it in my own way. All right, fine. Tell me what happened then. Well, then I showed Jean, uh, Miss Stilson, how we make up the map. And one thing led to another, and, well, we made a date for the next day. We were to have lunch together at one of those little sidewalk cafes on Pearl Street. Mm -hmm. I remember that next morning vividly. Of course, it's only been a few weeks, but 
I know the picture will stay in my mind as long as I live. I was in a good mood when I woke up, and for me, that's unusual. But then I got off the bed and went to the window. Oh, no. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. <laughs> I suppose then you, you called off your date. <laughs> well, I was uh, humiliated, Doctor. But I was not about to call off my date. In fact, I called her at her hotel at the time we'd arranged. Now, wait till I tell you about that. I walked into the hotel and crossed the lobby to the desk. Good afternoon, sir. May I help you? Oh, would you... Uh, say, haven't I seen you before? Well, I... Uh, of course. Of course, you were, the, you were the operator in my building when the regular boy was out. Yes, 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 that's right. I was just helping a friend out. But good old Hank... George. Oh, yes, good old George. Well, he's better now, so I'm working here. May I help you? Yes. Uh, would you call Miss Jean Stilson's room, please? Uh, she's expecting me. My name is uh, James... James Tracy. Certainly, sir. Operator, will you ring Miss Stilson's room, please? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tracy, uh, you don't by any chance have uh, galloping consumption, do you? What? Well, I was just asking. Uh, I was just asking. Uh, I just happened to know of a good polar bear club. I thought you might like to join. Oh, it's a great sport. Polar bear club? Yes, you cut holes in the ice and go swimming. Oh, it's a fine sport. Invigorating. Now, see here, Miss you... Miss Stilson doesn't seem to answer. Well, with you around, I'm not surprised. You want me to try again? First the rain, and then you, and... Now, she doesn't answer. Well, in view of the rain, I guess I can't blame her. Bad luck always comes in threes. Sometimes fours. You want me to ring again? No. If she asks, I'll be at the bureau. I'll tell her. Polar Bear Club. That's all I need. Hello. Am I late? Oh, hello. Is something wrong? Well, it's just that hotel clerk of yours. Say, how long has he been working here? What do you mean? Well, the one at the desk, right... Well, there's no one there now. Must have stepped out. Well, what happened? Uh, it's not important. I'm sorry I'm late. I got caught out in the... I got delayed. <laughs> it's all right. This isn't the first time I've been wrong. You can say rain if you want to. Well, then, if it's all right with you, I got caught out in the rain. Now, what about that lunch you promised me? Good idea. Well, then, let's go. Uh, Trace, let's save the sidewalk cafe for another day. All right? <laughs> Now, what a man says and what a man thinks can sometimes be very different things, Doctor. Well, what do you mean? Well, actually, I, I was pretty sensitive about the forecast. I, I wanted her to have a good opinion of me. You know, I wanted to impress her. And the first time I tried... It turned out wrong, eh? Mm, it didn't seem to bother her, but it bothered me. And running into that odd little man again didn't help much either. This is very interesting. Go on. Well, we stopped by the bureau after lunch and I looked over the map. Then I stuck my neck out again. You made another prediction? I did. <laughs> for clearing and generally fair weather. Then I suggested we take a drive up to Putnam Observatory on the following Sunday. She liked the idea, so we left town about Sunday noon. We'd gotten about 25 or 30 miles out of town. I can't understand how it clouded over so quickly. Oh, let's not talk shop, Trace. But there's just no excuse for this overcast. You take things so seriously. After all, just a couple of clouds. Uh-oh, what's this? Looks like a roadblock. I wonder what it's for. You got me. Uh, what seems to be the trouble, officer? Is something wrong? Yeah, well, no, no, not if you got chains, ma'am. Chains? You mean tire chains? Why would we need chains? Well, it's snowing pretty hard up in those <laughs> mountains, ma'am. Snowing? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jack. This is marvelous. It's snowing. But it, it just can't be snowing. <laughs> oh, road's almost blocked up top. Not one single bit of evidence pointed to snow. Not one. Well, it's snowing, all right. I wouldn't advise you to try this road without chains. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't, huh? Oh, not chains. Well, for your information, it couldn't possibly be more than a light snow. And furthermore, we're going on with or without chains. Okay, buddy, okay. If you want to risk your neck, go ahead, but don't blame me. I didn't make the snow. If you want to go, I go. I won't stop you. Thank you. Uh, 
I couldn't believe it. You see, the way it looked to me, nothing on earth could account for snow at that particular time. The more I thought about it, the faster I drove. Trace, don't you think you're going a little fast? It's just not right, that's all. We've always had a fairly accurate forecast in our bureau. And now, all of a sudden, everything's backwards. Storms without warning. Uh -uh. There it is, up ahead. Trace, please. Look, look, see it? Snow, all right. Well, that means the pavement might be slippery. Trace, you're going too fast. Trace, that curve! Look out! <laughs> Is this James R. Tracy, sir? Mm, is that your name? That's my name, all right. But who is this little man, and what's this all about? Am I dead? Not yet, you're not. Uh, I'll handle this. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. No, Mr. Tracy, you're not dead yet. This is just a processing point where we make the final checkup. Yeah, but so just have a little patience, please. This won't take long. Well, what about the girl? I was with a girl. The girl. And not a scratch. But the car's a total wreck. Car. According to my list, John R. Tracy is to die of natural causes, compounded by exposure to severe weather. His car skidded on icy pavement and went over an embankment. Oh, the whole thing looked very natural, sir. Mm. Well, I suppose an auto accident is a natural way to die these days. Uh, let me see your activities report. Here you are, sir. <laughs> You'd almost think it hadn't been his time. <laughs> uh, I hope you didn't tamper. You didn't, did you? You know, we're not supposed to tamper with human life. Tamper? Oh, heaven forbid. And that's what I meant. Well, I just, I just like everything to be, uh, well, uh, neat. What do you mean, neat? Well, I mean, I mean, if the list says to pick up a person for processing on a certain date, I'd just like them to be ready, that's all. It kind of sets things up, so to speak. It isn't as if I were really tampering, though. You didn't try to coerce, intimidate, or exercise any action? which might interfere with his free will? Oh, my, no. You didn't exercise any influence which might have tended to alter the course of his life? Oh, certainly not. Oh, now, wait a minute. Well, not any that you'd notice. That is, I'd better have a look at your activities report. Well, what's this? Distorted signals on 11 teletypewriter circuits, burned out rectifier tubes on three ships' radio transmitters, made erasures on weather maps... What's all this about? That's what I'd like to well, know. Well, I had to do that so he wouldn't get his weather data. Weather data? What weather data? But, sir, according to my list, James R. Tracy is to die as the result of causes compounded by severe weather, storms and the like. That tallies. Well, how could he get caught in a storm if he knew it was coming, sir? I had to keep him from getting any word at all about approaching storms. You see, sir, he's a meteorologist, a weatherman. Weatherman? He's supposed to be a retired locomotive engineer. A retired locomotive? Oh, no. You and your enthusiasm. You tampered. But how was I to know, sir? Now, hold on a minute. Hold on. What's all this mean? It means a terrible mistake has been made. You have our sincere apology for the inconvenience. You'll be returned immediately. Immediately. Oh, no. Uh, no? What do you mean? Well, you've ruined my car, my professional reputation and made me look like a fool to the only girl I ever really cared for. Now you think you're going to get off with just an apology? You're right, uh, but uh, what did you have in mind? We can't turn back time. Well, just correct some of your mistakes. The past is gone, but we can see that your future makes all these mistakes seem unimportant. All in the natural order, of course. No miracles. Mm, that seems fair enough. Then you'll return? I'll return. Trace. Oh. Trace, please speak to me. G Jean? Oh. Trace, are you all right? Oh, oh what a head. Oh, are you all right, Jean? Yeah, I'm fine. You just about scared the wits out of me. We went over the embankment, huh? Uh huh. I guess we're lucky to be alive. Oh, look at your beautiful car. Yeah, not much left. But don't worry about it, honey. I think everything's going to be all right. And that's a forecast I'm pretty sure of. Come on, we better get back up to the highway before we get snowed in. Mm -hmm. Trace? Yes? You said something when you were unconscious. I did? Uh-huh. You said that I was the only girl you ever really cared about. Well? 
Well, I... I just wanted you to know that... that goes both ways. Ah. Uh, you see? My forecast is panning out already. We got back to the highway all right, and the highway patrol gave us a ride back to town. It was the next morning when things really began to happen. Oh, I tell you, I've been working like a dog all morning, Chief. We've had reports from weather stations I never knew existed. And there's not a ship in the Pacific that hasn't sent in an observation. That kind of thing just doesn't happen. Oh, it's not out of the natural order, people doing their jobs. But uh, it is strange, all right. Strange? Man, what an understatement. Look at this, Trace. Here's an example. Sloppy ships like the General Henry B. Morrison. Here, take a look at this. Exact temperatures, wind direction down to half a degree, wind speed to two decimal points, a barometer reading with decimal points. Trace, what gives? Now, Jerry, let's not look too closely at this gift horse. At last, we've got a chance to see how a weather bureau can operate with all the information. We might just make a little history. Hello, Clarion Dispatch. This is Tracy at the Weather Bureau. We've got your forecast ready if you want it. Go on, go on. Make it good. I will. The forecast. Fair. No, not generally fair. Fair in this area only, till 7.30 a.m., followed by overcast. Uh, light snow flurries will begin at 11.15 and continue through the night till 3.30 a.m. No, I'm not being smart. That's the forecast. You're welcome. Well, that's telling them, Trace. Now we'll see what happens. Well, that's about it, Doctor. You saw the office when you came in. I've had to increase the staff 600%, and we haven't made a wrong forecast yet. It's been four weeks. It's amazing. We've been getting calls from all over the world. Of course, we don't try to handle anything much past the Mississippi. Uh, doctor, I need an explanation. This whole business just isn't natural. Well, that shouldn't be too hard to supply. When you started your story, it sounded like you were priming yourself for a nervous breakdown, but now the facts are fairly obvious. You, you had a very serious concussion, Mr. Tracy. Concussion can be a dangerous thing. It could have produced a subdural hematoma that might have killed you. But in your case, I think something else happened. There's so much about concussion that is not known, but I would say that in your case, the blow tended to stimulate areas of your brain which have been out of use. Well, but what about those exact reports from weather observers? <laughs> They've probably been coming in that way for a long time. You've just forgotten what to do with them. The knowledge was just brought forward once again from your subconscious. Well, conceding that, but only for the sake of argument... What about that odd fellow in the elevator and behind the hotel desk? <laughs> he never existed. Concussion once again. Sometimes it produces amnesia, a loss of memory. Sometimes it produces illusory memories. You remember things that never really happened at all. <laughs> Believe me, Mr. Tracy, your little man does not exist outside of your own very imagination. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I want you to come to my office tomorrow. We'll go into this thing a little more thoroughly, all right? I'll be there. Fine. Oh, in the meantime, I certainly wouldn't worry about it. Oh, here, Doctor, I'll show you out. Thank you. Oh, hello. I was just about to come in and see how you two were doing. Oh, Dr. Torkelson, may I present my wife, Jean? Indeed a pleasure, Mrs. Tracy. She's a beautiful woman, Tracy. Why, thank you. <laughs> well, did you make any progress? Oh, there are a few things to iron out. We shouldn't have any trouble. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Just a moment, please. Oh, Chief, the Navy's calling. I'll be right there. Excuse me. I'll see you tomorrow, Doctor. <laughs> Don't forget. Uh, doctor, is it anything no, serious? No, no, no. No need to worry, Mrs. Tracy. Almost all is the result of the concussion he suffered in that accident. It's, it's all in his head. <laughs> well, I must be going. My, I'm glad my office is not this busy. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Tracy. Goodbye, Doctor. Ah, very interesting case. <laughs> Odd little man. <laughs> Dr. Torkelson? <laughs> Dr. Andrew J. Torkelson? Yes. Well, I've been waiting for you. Oh, 
I do keep office hours, you know. Oh, I don't need a doctor. I'm the elevator operator. 23 floors, you know. Wouldn't want you to walk down. I just thought I'd wait for you. Well, I must say that's very, very kind of you. Very <laughs> thoughtful. You like elevators, Doctor? Like elevators. You like elevators, Doc? You know, some people like the Otis. And then some people like the Llewellyn. Oh, yes. But they're all alike to me. Uh. Invigorating, don't you think? Well. How do you feel about express elevators, Doc? Express elevators? Yeah, well, come on in, Doctor. Come in so I can close the door. Uh, just a moment, if you don't mind. Uh, tell me, are... Uh, are you the regular operator? Oh, no. A good old Jack. No, no. George. Oh, yes. Yeah. George. George. Well, good old George. Well, he's sick today. I'm just filling in for him. Hey, hey Doc. Where are you going? This. This is impossible. Absolutely impossible. Oh, Mr. Tracy. Mr. Tracy, please, may I have a word with you? This is Lucille Ball again. You've probably heard it said that Hollywood is the crossroads of the world. Well, it's true. You meet people here from almost any place you can mention. People with all kinds of ideas. People with problems. But once in a while, you meet someone with a good solution to a problem. I'd like to tell you about someone I met who has a wonderful idea. A simple yet perfect solution to the unhappiness, misunderstanding, and disruption that occurs in family life today. The solution is this. Pray together as a family. Why? Because in a prayerful home, where there is respect for God, there is also respect for one another. A respect that brings harmony and happiness. A respect that brings understanding, forgiveness, and unchanging love. That's why Family Theater asks you to make family prayer a daily practice in your home. For you too will discover the solution. Family prayer brings happiness and harmony into a home. For the family that prays together, stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Something in the Air, starring John Howard. Lucille Ball was your hostess. Others in our cast were Lillian Bayef, Howard McNear, Pat McGeehan, Herb Ellis, and Leo Curley. The script was written by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Cadryman, starring Jimmy Durante and Barry Sullivan. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.